done bad. You look happy. I know, you're getting married. <laughs> and to whom exactly? Alright, that was just a wild guess. What's up? <laughs> Fiora gave me the most remarkable present. Oh, is that what's in your hand? It is indeed. It's a rare insect found only around Colony 9. Take a closer look if you'd like. Ugh, I, I hate, hate creepy, creepy crawlies. I think I'm fine right here. Sorry, but I hate bugs. Ugh, I make my skin crawl. <laughs> Alright then, not, not to worry. Sorry I asked. So you're telling me Fjord doesn't mind them at all? Actually, she likes them just as much as you do. I once put one in her pocket as a present and she went berserk. Dunban, newsflash here. No one likes bugs in their clothes. <laughs> I realize that the hard way. Things were more innocent then. Takes me back, you know? To when you were a weirdo. <laughs> hey, collecting bugs is a great hobby. What about Juju? I bet he collects bugs. Juju's more into animals. Bugs aren't his thing. One day he brought home a baby hawk. A thorn was so mad. <laughs> ah yes, those critters might look innocent. But look the other way and they'll have your finger. The other big nuisance with Juju was vegetables. He can't stand them, but never got him to eat the things. Same shock, his diet's not healthy at all. I've seen him eat vegetables. Fior usually cooks vegetables, and I've seen him eat the lot. <laughs> He's too embarrassed to tell her he doesn't like them. <laughs> Those two, they must have been a handful. <laughs> they were, and they still are. I'm, Fior, I'm, I'm Fior's guardian, and I have to keep an eye on Shulk, if you know what I mean. You have got a lot on, a pl on your plate, but you take good care of them. If Shulk touches Fiora, I'm going to punch him in, in the face. <laughs> Was it done, Ben? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> on that cryptic note, hey everyone, welcome back to Xenina Blade Chronicles Definitive Edition. In the last episode, we cleared up things in Colony 6 and we helped out not, not only Berry Jammy, but Nick as well. And they're both feeling, feeling better and they've got our, their lives sorted out with, with our new friends. This episode, we are going to make a new relationship blossom and expand one of our characters in a new way. And we are talking about a lovely lady who is right here with us. And can I say, thank God this episode has come because I finally, finally get to talk about something that I have been alluding to, that I, I, I've been talking non-discreetly for quite some time. And my God, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a revelation. But I'll get to that when we get to it. First off, last episode we asked, uh, we had a quest here for Yora, a high end in Colony 6, and he needed us to get something just so he, she can get the ability to write a poem about Neonic. And no, this is not the uh, relationship I was talking about. Also, yes, if you want, hang on, Le Lezuin from Machina Law. That's somehow in, in RFC. And. For some reason, a certain thing is not coming out to eat us. It's over here that he does. I know. I know. Just when you think the turds could not get any worse. Here we have Zagrid Zagame. Zagame, Zagame. Zagazig, Zagazar. <laughs> Either way, this guy is an is, is the ultimate turd. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but no. No, no, the enemy types are technically called Tudes, but, or Tudes, but to me, on first glance, they just look like turds, so I just, <laughs> so I just decided on my own volition <laughs> to call them turds, <laughs> because in some ways they are a bastard and they are literal pieces of crap in the right context. This guy only has three attacks, but don't be fooled, they they can be bad if, if you're not careful. As uh, we're clearly showing, we're, as uh, we're told, something him like nobody's business. First off, his talent art is verse eater 9, 
which is a massive attack and like normal Taurus, they can drop your maximum health to pretty much, pretty much like in, in half. And since they're all ganging up on you like a group of turds. They do a lot a lot of damage, but they but they can be mitigated by shield. And I think we I think we were unlucky because I think shield just ran out of yeah. <laughs> So that's great! You could say that is shite. You could say that's turd. Almost. Okay, fine. I am going to drop that right now. And also, they have a few more attacks as well. One of which is a, a single attack that can daze you, that being Strike. And the other one is Crush, which has a massive mo multiplier and can knock you back. This guy either knock you silly for a lot uh, for a lot of health, knock you silly to drain your health, or knock you silly that you are dazed silly. And guess what? It's not just him um, you gotta worry about. These other turds, and I don't mean that in funny context, they do the exact same thing. So, in theory, you could get debuffed on top on top of debuffed, or dazed and debuffed, and pick whichever one you want. Basically, th this is an ambush of tunes. Uh, so what might, might look simple, is actually kind of a difficult fight if you're not prepared for it. And keep in mind, since these are tortoises by nature, they also have uh, defenses across the board except for their front. So unfortunately, you can't do massive damage position-wise with Shulk. However, if you if you want to do a positional fight with Shulk, the sl Edge and Air Slash still are in effect. So what they might be, be difficult to uh, put up with, however, with uh, positioning and chain attacks, they're pretty much non-existent threats. And trust me, it could be it could be a right pain if you're not careful. For example, if you play a character like Ryan and have no sense of chain attack ability or or any break topple abilities in your party, this can take for ever the bring down in practice i had this i had this fight go on for 15 minutes plus aka not fun at all but if you're able to keep up better chain attack multipliers this thing's a cake to bring and bring down and having got two dual dual shells as, as a treasure which is Weird, to say the least. Mm -hmm. But we also get quite a good few weapons and and on and on pieces which we got. But unfortunately, though, we do not have any art books. But in case you're curious, the art books that guy drops is Blinding Blossom, Magstorm, Shield Bullet, and Electric Gutbuster. So do do that at what you will. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you could use it as a grinding spot, but in all honesty, I feel I feel that those fights take way too much time and it's not really efficient. But if you want to, I guess you could do it. Anyway, though, here, here we have us back in Khan Six. We finally get to deal with another another character in which. Um, in which we bought from Colony 9 to Colony 6. He had a mental breakdown and uh, he was in, in difficult in difficult places. I'm not talking about Oliski. I'm talking about an old man. <laughs> yes, except, except this time, he's the one causing the issues. But until then, let's make a nice couple. Can I help you? I hope you're not here to change my mind because it won't work. I told you the other- Is that talking me? I have never seen such a remarkable thing. We Machina thought it was just a fairy tale or something. But why have you bought it to me? Oh, that poet asked you to give it to me as a softener. Well, what a surprise. He seems to know a thing or two about us. I don't mean to be condescending. In fact, I'm sort of flattered. Tell him he can write his poem. So, it's a legend, but yet we found it just dropped on the ground in a random place. That's like saying you find you finding like I don't know a ten dollar bill on the ground, saying, "Oh my God, it's a legendary cash." 
Did you get her approval? Mm, that is excellent news. That's a bargain wing is very well known among Machina. I expect she reacted warmly to being presented with it. Of course she did, because it's me. The bargain wing was a tale told long, long ago. It, its moral is thus. One should not rely on chance, but dare to make dreams a reality. The Magna can make their dreams a reality with cooperation. Someone should have said that to Egil. Through cooperation will blossom a beautiful, lasting friendship. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll make your dreams a reality. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make your wishes come true. What's well, a very nice quote there. Which quote is it? Because it's familiar, but I can't think of it immediately. We'll, we'll make your dreams a, a reality. Oh god, I know what you're... Make your dreams a reality. I hear that voice in my head, but I don't know what it is referencing. Is it Persona? My AP Persona. Either way, we'll put it on screen what it is. <laughs> Anyway, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this. Oh, you're just in time. I'm in to spot a father. I'm about to go out with... I mean, friends. Could you please keep father occupied while I do? He does worry so much when I leave him alone at night. My father never changes. That is why I need to keep him busy. He needs a distraction. What kind of daughter would make a father worry at night? Surely you must have had a similar experience. This is the most important period in my life. I guess girls will be girls. Thank you. Just keep my father occupied by talking to him. It would mean a great deal to me. Also, we picked the wrong sister. Yeah, we said that we chose a different route, but our notes kind of got mixed up. It really... It really is the pain in the ass when two sisters have similar names. Yeah. And they also have the last name of Ar Ar Argenta, so it gets confusing. Mm -hmm. I hear you and I have some business today, no? My daughter has requested you keep me company in her absence. Am I right? Yes, I thought I was right. Zell is a kind soul. Whenever she is with friends, she has someone come talk to me. Yes? You wish to discuss something else? How about we talk about how about we talk about my daughter? I can assure you I shan't be lonely you even if you were not here. Well, I often count and then pluck blades of grass in my garden. She usually gets back after I plucked about ten thousand blades. One of those is gonna be caught a cosmos. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> no, actually, I lie. That's never going to be Cosmos. <laughs> That's when I you have to count even more blades than you usual. What is it? You still want to chat? I can stew over what to do with Zell when she breaks curfew. What would you do if she was your daughter? Tell me. I share your opinion. I often get angry at her actions, but I forgive her nonetheless. She is my little. She is. She is my little. My little. little girl, and she always will be. And forget about her. She's nothing to me. Eh, she's probably dead anyway. As long as she returns home safely to me, I am a happy father. Uh. What now? Oh, you want to hear more of Zell? She will be home soon. This will have to be our last li li little chat. Let me see. Ah, oh, yes. I am troubled over Zell's choice in men. Her fiancé, to be precise. It is ultimately her choice, but I fail to see what she sees in him. He is poor and weak-minded. Oh, what do you think? You are young. Happiness never guarantees a long and successful partnership. A marriage should be based on stronger stuff and made to last. It would be a disaster if she were to go through what I once did. And that is the end of our interesting little chat. You have helped me to consider many things I would not have. Find Zell later and she will give you your payment. Couldn't you pay me? <laughs> no, I'm just an old man. I could pay you in blades of grass. <laughs> Freshly plucked, I might add. I greatly appreciate this. Thank you. Father has been acting strangely recently. Perhaps he's found out about me and my sweet Lesky. Never mind. Thank you, please accept this as a token of my appreciation.
And then, and then all of a sudden, we realize that uh, he's been with with her this entire time. My God, a lot of things happen in two episodes. <laughs> they met. They they were friends. They fell in love. They assumedly did it. <laughs> and now they're like this. Oh, where did you go? I've I've been looking for you. Did Zell tell you about about us? That's the problem, you see. She's been telling people about us, and now her dad knows. Oh dear. You should see him, he's absolutely fuming with rage. He kept saying that he'd never prove no matter what. Is it because he's a racist? <laughs> oh, no. Come on, they're not, uh, they're not an enemy. What do you think? <laughs> I'd do my best to bring him around, but it was no use. He wants five scratch jewels and two lucky choking rings. But that's impossible and he knows it. Things aren't looking good for me and Zell. I'm begging you, please help us. Are you sure you thought this through, Alexei? I mean, he did ask you to get those things for him. Maybe you should think this over some more. Nope. I fought long and hard and, and said finally. But now I know I can't do it. I'm asking you out of des des desperation. This is the only way I know that, that it won't end us in, in us breaking up. Well, if you're sure. It's in your hands. Yeah, because that's, uh, yeah, that's how relationships work. If you want something done, ask someone else to do it. <laughs> that's a good base for a relationship. That's what every everyone in this game's done. Hey, I like this person. Can you talk to them for me? Uh -huh. Perfect. Thanks. I'll rush these over to Zell, Zell's dad. You wait here, Zell. Zell will want to thank you per uh, personally, even though she's right freaking there. <laughs> the woman can speak for herself. I don't care. It didn't work. He admitted that I managed to bring him what he asked, but then he started going on and on and on about how I'm no good for Zell. There's nothing I could do. He's his daughter. He's his daughter's father. Wait, what is that? He's, He's his daughter's father. Wait, wait, was that a typo? No, I, I, I don't. I think he's. I don't know. He's his. He's his daughter's father. He's basically saying that's her father. That was a. Weird way to put it, but oh well, it's not as bad as that. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm in danger. <laughs> Looks like you just have to take whatever he throws at me. Sorry, I made you go through all that work for nothing. And we did it, but there's still a lot more to do. And I'll get in. And I'll get into this very much. So, after this one partic particular quest, you there? You must know. I cannot find my dear daughter. Do you know where she she could be? Zell, we should be there soon. Then we can get on with our lives in peace. It's not been easy to find. Are you sure we'll be okay there? It won't be easy to begin with, but we'll be on our feet in no time. As long as we stick together. So, you won't say. I wish I'd never gone against her decision in the first place. Then I would not be worrying about where she is now. Well, there's only one place in which we know where people go to hide in this place. So, we'll, we'll go there now. And whilst we're going along, I finally want to get to a, con a topic about Sharla. Now, I've said this before in the past, I think Sharla, out of all seven main, main main characters, that she is the weakest. She is less. She she is the least developed. You didn't see that. <laughs> you didn't see that at all. Not at all. <laughs> anyway, though, we have been over the Shar Sh Sharla is the weakest character. She starts off. Not on the best foot because of, uh, of Juju and how needless he is affecting her arc. We do get some nice moments with her and Melia when, when she's saying, You know what? No, no, man. You deserve to be with Shulk. And you know what? I've got your back. It creates a, ni it creates a nice little dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then after that, she kind of gets put in, into the background of uh, Court Court and they're on. And I'll bring up Ag Agnirifer in a little bit. How's it going? 
Come take us back, have you? We're not going back there. Nothing in that place but sadness. How's it going? Come take us back. And, and also keep in mind, since they are NPCs, they going? do have something to trade in new places. So, whatever it's worth, want to take Angel, Angel X's? Hey, it's a good place to get them. Or back attacks or double attacks. These are all good things to have. That's right. And overtrade for Oleski is thick Vranahide. Not need not needed, but hey ho. Past things. Terrain defenses in the marsh, which is a really good thing to get as well. But until then. Past things. I have been waiting for you. For me? You appear to be the one who best understands my feelings. I thought that a change of scenery would change my life, but it looks like such a thing is not so easy to achieve. You're not wrong. I used to live at the camp, so I know how it feels. It's, cer it's certainly not nice living in a cave. That is not- Bathing is a far cry from what I'm used to, and food is scarce. The ground is so hard I can't sleep properly. But you've got a home you can go back to if you want. Wouldn't it be better to go back? You're right. I do would want to be in the colony, live in that house and see my family. Do you think you could persuade Oleski to take us back? I just don't have the willpower to ask him to change his mind. Okay, I'll talk to him. Thank you so very much. How's it going? Hello there, Oleski, wasn't it? How's everything going there? Not too bad. It's not as convenient as a colony, but we're adapting just fine. You mean you're coping, but what about her? You mean Zell? She looks like she's uh, certain, but it's early days still. Give her time and she'll be fine. Just like me. How long are you guys gonna live here for? Forever. Is that what you really want? Have you thought about children? This isn't a place to raise them. And you and them will get lonely without anyone to talk to. Look at her. Zell looks far from being happy, Oleski. Well, there's some truth in that. Have you thought about going back to Colony 6? You wouldn't have to worry about having children with Zell. You could raise a family and live happily together. I know. I know. But there's one problem. Zell's pig-headed dad. You love Zell, don't you? Of course I love her. More than, more than anything in the world. And how about her father? Stubborn as he is, don't you think he loves her too? He loves her. A father that dotes that, that much on a daughter must love her. Have you asked Zell how she feels about her father? I don't imagine for a minute that she hates him either. But you're forcing her to put you before her own father. You're ignoring the, both her and her father's feelings in all of this. I know, but... Look into Zell's eyes and you'll know what her heart is saying. All I can see is a sad and tormented young woman. You're... You're right. We'll go back. We'll go back to Colony 6. That's good to hear. I know it wasn't my place to say any of that, but it needed to be said. No, I'm, I'm glad you said it. You spoke like you feel the same towards your family and friends. You must cherish them a lot. I'm glad you came here, otherwise I'd still be blind to her feelings. Now you're starting to make me blush. Anyone would have done the same. Well, I suppose means I should pack our things for the journey. Hope we'll be able to see each other again back in the colony. On a personal note, I can't tell you personally how much I dealt with this uh, dilemma when, when we were talking about our future, honey. Mm -hmm. So I kept on thinking, it's like, do I want to take her away from her family and make her live in two a different country? I don't know. A little personal thing I've always felt, but. Hey ho. Oh, I'll just say this, honey. As long as you're happy here w with me, that's all I could wish for. I'm happy here. <laughs> Good. But enough about personal things. I'll talk about Charlotte in a little bit, bit longer. Because again, there is a lot of things to unpack, and in fact, it's all to do with not only the beta of Xenoblade Chronicles, but actually the original draft of the story. Let's talk first. My daughter's returned. You persuade her and, and for that, I'm truly grateful.
We are we are where where whoever the three of us should live together. It will be difficult for me to adjust, but with the time, I'll I'll find a way. I don't really have a choice. You'll be fine. Don't be too hard on them now, will you? I won't make that mistake. Compared to the pain I would put my daughter through, it is nothing. And now my daughter and her man will be happy together. That is what is most important. You are not wrong. It was a miracle that two so very different people found each other. Some might even call it fate. And now they can be happy. And I wish you all the happiness in the world as well. Love and affection overcome all. They're infectious, traveling from person to person. Now with that, we get a salad, a salad shot, which is not a unique weapon, but hey, uh, we'll take it just to say we can. And what we can also say is the affection skill branch has been upgraded, and that gives us maximum HP. If you want Charlotte to have some long durability in battle, hey, that's not a bad thing. But now, with that said, that's Charlotte's Char skill branch done, and now we've got Charlotte's narrative out our aspects, let's talk quickly about the original draft of Xenoblade Chronicles. As I said before, the beginning of Sharla, rough. Her time with Melia, fantastic. After Agnirifer, when Sharla just goes off the face of the cliff. And let me show you what I mean. Okay, after Agnirifer with Makonis Core, Shulk, we get immediate contact with Zanza, the Monado, and Dixon. And going on Dixon, we get Dixon and Dunban's dynamic as conflict there. Dixon and, and Lorafi and the Telefia. Melia is already invested in that, and so then and so there's deaths in there too. Mm -hmm. Fior Fiora, her conflict of being a machina, her conflict with Shulk, and Melia to a boot. Ryan, yeah sure he's not as prevalent, but they even sort of admit that with the third wheel. But we'll get to Ryan in a little bit as well. Vricky He's kind of the Nopon. The Nopon is kind of like the cutesy, the mascot, the kind of comedy relief aspect about it. Mm -hmm. But now, let's talk, let's talk beta content, or beta footage, or beta stories. In the original draft of Xenoblade Zin Chronicles, Sharla was meant to die. And Ryan was meant to have a... I guess, I guess like a moral dilemma. So much so that in the original draft, Shulk would pilot the Bionis and Ryan would turn against the party and pilot them and pilot the Makarnis in order to save Sharla. <laughs> so the reason why Ryan and Sharla have such a limited role in this game is because their original ideas were scrapped. So, and the story was so far, far off their original plan, there wasn't really a time or a moment to really make, make more dynamic cutscenes between Ryan and Charlotte. Which I think is a really damn shame. Because Ryan, yeah sure, he, he kind of gets put in, into the background, but I don't know, I would like to know more about Charlotte. And, you know, just have like a, a dynamic between Charlotte, Ryan and Gado. Yeah. Because I've said it before, and I... I even said it after after Agnirifer went. The way Sharla reacted after Gatto died. Too right. Yeah, my fiance who died right in front of my eyes, who sacrificed himself for me, who I looked for for so long, who I've had a storied history with. Too right. <laughs> it seems very anticlimactic. And I wish, and it's probably not going to happen now that Assumedly, everything in Future Connected and Xenoblade Definitive Edition content has been unveiled to this point. That there's no like dynamic between those two ca characters, and I wish we got more. Mm -hmm. I really wish we got more because I want to like each and every character. Mm -hmm. It's just unfortunately Ryan, Ryan and Char and Charlotte's place in the story kind of got kind of got drafted because well they got new drafts. Oh no. What do you think? Do you think Charlotte and Ryan should have more, more, more content or more story, or, or more story relevance? Because I think I would. Because don't get me wrong, I like Charlotte as a character. It's just there's not enough to really like about about her. I do really like the aspect of her for being like a motherly hen figure, watching watching over Ryan, watching over Shulk and Fiora and Melia up to a point. But I don't know.
Might as well. Yeah, I guess since we're going around here, this this is the fire this is the fire support that we need to kill for Carly Six in order to move both things both things along with the defense. So as there you go. It's not much different to what the uh, the moist enemies were in the uh, McConnor's field. So have fun. They think blaze and whatnot, but they're done. Uh oh. <laughs> there's more. <laughs> yeah, that 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 there, there, there's more, but we'll do that in another time. But of course, quests exclude. Excuse me, drop. I just quest exclusive stuff. I don't know. That's the thing I've wanted to talk, I talk, talk about for a long time. Charlotte, you are you are the, you are the weakest character, a character, but you could have had so much depth to you. Mm-hmm. And Ryan as well. But I guess I guess that's it. I said, guys, what do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, though. I think I'm going to call things there, guys. So, as always, thank, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this episode, be sure to like it. If you don't like it, well then... I hope you find affection elsewhere. <laughs> but if you want to subscribe to more content like this, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. I'd love to. Thank you. Well, uh, it does look unusual. We don't get those at Colony 6. She, I remember the exact type I like. Ah, no wonder you're beaming. Wouldn't you be if someone gave you something you liked? Yes, getting the present always feels nice if it's something I like. Yeah, it could be annoying to get something you have no use for. Like fruit. I don't like fruit. If someone gave me fruit, I wouldn't know what to do with it. But the thought's still nice. That's very true, but some people are particularly clueless. The other day, Shaw gave Ricky an old machine part, for instance, the idiot. He did? What was he thinking? Everyone knows if it's not food, Ricky's not going to be interested. <laughs> I was there. Poor Ricky, he was so confused. I just stood and laughed. <laughs> Shaw's a bit slow on the uptake. Maybe he'll get the hang of these things someday. <laughs> he certainly needs refining. He hasn't been giving Fiora anything ridiculous, has he? I hope not. If he did, Fiora would give him an earful. You really worry about those two, don't you? <laughs> that I do, Charlotte. Because she was the one to marry Fiora. I know it. Uh, hello? Baroness to Dunban? Oh, oh, sorry, Charlotte. I was thinking about a present to give Fiora in return. Any ideas? And if Shok if Shok messes this up, I swear to God, <laughs> I won't be the only one with one arm. <laughs> I shall end his life. <laughs> like me and bugs. Really? You don't like bugs? You should have said so earlier. I would have shown it to you. It's all right. I'll live. But in case it helps, Millie's not too keen on them either. <laughs> That'll keep it out of sight when I'm around her. What are you going to do, give your in return? Any ideas? <laughs> I was thinking flowers, maybe. I'm struggling for ideas, to be honest. Well, how about an exotic food? Your loves to cook. She always loves... She's always looking to try new recipes for Shulk. That might be a good idea. Thank you, Shaw. Then we'd better get looking. How about we start around here? <laughs> Agreed. Le lead off. I completely get what you mean. Hey, doesn't Ryan like bugs? I think he likes most things. He's a bit of an animal lover, too. I think I heard Mel is as, as well, actually. She is? How surprising. I'd love to know more about her tastes. What about, um, fruit? Does she like fruit? Nope. She definitely doesn't like fruit. She told me so herself. She might be like me. I don't like sweet things at all, really. really. That's a shame. I love fruit. Everyone's different, I guess. And it's good, it's, it's good to learn things about each other, right? It is. Thanks, Dunban. I think I might give Ryan some fruit as a present. I think he'd like it. So that's who you wanted to find out about. Well, Ryan likes basically everything, so you can't go wrong. 
Ah, subtle store. Uh, sorry, telling on who likes what. Hint, hint, give presents. <laughs> hint, hint, build up affinity. It's helpful, I swear. 